convinced that travelling by train is an exceedingly unhealthy practice when the RAF is on the warpath. While the King is in residence at Windsor Castle, he undertakes the solemn duty of unveiling the town's memorial to his father. At the ceremony which takes place under the lee of the castle on St George's Day, the Archbishop of Canterbury greets the members of the family as they arrive, and in the presence of the Queen, whose appearance is as ever gracious and charming, and of his mother, the King makes the first public speech of his reign. If I may speak for a moment of him, in whose honour this memorial has been erected, let me only say, that to me, personally, the memory of my father will always bring the inspiration of a high example. I hope that in fulfilling our great responsibilities, the Queen and I may be supported by that trust and affection which was so fully given to him and to my dear mother by the peoples of this country and of the empire. The drapery is released, revealing a superb and simple memorial, the work of Sir Edwin Lutyens, and the ceremony concludes with the king laying a wreath on its lower step. The monument takes the form of two fountains with a cenotaph at the centre.